God constantly speaks to our situation as a way of coming through to us either for counsel, for guidance, or for empowerment. God constantly speaks to our situation as a way of coming through to us either for counsel, for guidance, or for empowerment. Let's pray together. Our Father, I thank you for the way you come through for us when you speak to us. You lift our hearts, you cancel our hearts, you empower us, O oh God, in life. We welcome you, our Lord, to minister to us, and it is in just name that we pray and believe. Amen. We are going to do our first reading that is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 3. And I'm reading for seven and eight. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to the rescue them from the heart of Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perisites, Hivites, and Jebusites. You're going to do a second reading that is, that is taken from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1 to 5. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved. Uh, today I'm sharing on the theme, God Intervenes. I'm saved uh, this morning. I have the hope of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given me that hope in him and I'm powered by his grace. As I said, I'm sharing on God intervenes. We share, we've read from the book of Exodus, chapter three, uh, from verse 7 and 8. But this, the whole of this chapter covers the call of Moses. And God was speaking to Moses concerning how he had seen the suffering of the children of Israel and the way he had also heard their cry. And then he says, he is concerned. And when he is concerned, he has taken action. This is awesome. When we hear this about God, when God appears to Moses, the 
all chapters, uh, there are some phases that Moses was inquiring from God, who are you? And what am I going to tell these people who you are? And then God tells him in verse 14, I am whom I am. This is what you're going to tell Pharaoh. It is in the same chapter. But from what you have read, I see of more of, um, of introduction of who God is. I love the way he is, a God who sees, he is a God who reasons, and after reasoning, and he's got to get concerned, and then he is a God who takes action. It is always good to note that the God we relate with, God who created the heavens and the earth, God who gave us his only begotten son is a God who sees. He is a God who hears. He is a God who gets concerned with our issues. And he is a God who takes action in other ones. This is a God who intervenes in our situation. In our country, we have a very special day that is on 12th of December. For today is 13th. 12th is a day where we remember how our country got its freedom. And this is a very great coincidence as we start the December holidays. When we celebrate the way God came into human life through his son, it is like when God unfolded his great plan to save us from sin. It coincides with the way when our country also got freedom from the, our colonizers. This is the way God acts for who he is. And in the whole Bible, we see God intervening in the various human situations. Sometimes these, in, more, in all the instances, these are things that are beyond human beings. When he, heard, when he saw the sufferings of the children of Israel, when they were helplessly crying for help, God heard, and then he gets concerned. He is a God who comes and who is moved by our situation, and he takes action and the most appropriate action. He told Moses that after what he had heard, after he, what he had seen, and for the concern of his heart, he was he's taking an action of sending him to rescue the children of Israel. This is a great character of God. The way he continually intervenes, in our lives. He intervenes in so many issues of human life. He intervened when the children of Israel were helpless in slavery. They were burdened. They were inhumanly treated. And their dignity was low. For they were slaves. They didn't have freedom. They didn't have power of their eyes. 
But we are told God saw that. He heard when they were crying. He got concerned because he is a merciful God, a gracious, loving Father. He got concerned with the situation of the children of Israel, and he took action. But it is good also to go back a little, to go a little back to see the great intervention that God made in the rise of the children of Israel. We see it even from the way Moses was born in those very harsh conditions. He didn't say to the children of Israel, someone who wasn't conversant with their suffering. He sent Moses who was born there. He survived because of God's own intervention. He engages in an effort to, to redeem his people. When he killed an Egyptian to redeem an Israelite. But at this moment he was also powerless because he was doing that as a human being, pained. We do not know, but you know so many things and so many details. But only one thing we know, that Moses was in the plan of God. And God is a wonderful planner. From the conception of Moses, the way he was born and hid in the, on the river banks, the way he was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, the way he was brought up by his mother as a paid nurse by Pharaoh's daughter <clears throat> when he was young, and the way he later comes to Pharaoh's house to read there <clears throat> as a son to his daughter. In the way he identifies with the Hebrews, instead of identifying with the Egyptians who were powerful, Moses grew and identified with slaves. We can follow and see how God is a great planner. And the way he had planned for the redemption, for the liberation of the children of Israel from slavery. It is a plan that continued to unfail every moment. No one knew that by the birth of Moses, God was unfailing a great plan of salvation to the children of Israel to redeem them from the heart of oppression. God has seen. God has heard. God was concerned. And God acted. And Moses is being sent moreover like a third face. It's like a moreover third face of this plan of God when he is now manifested by God as a savior. 
But Moses was a person who was familiar to the suffering of his people. He was a person who had their pain because he lived among them and had experienced their oppression. I love the way God plans, the way he executes his plans. It is awesome how God sees, how he is attentive when we are crying and calling upon him. And how he is also concerned. It is awesome how God acts and the way his plans continue to unfail. Till salvation and deliverance. In a similar way, God in, in this Christmas season, we celebrate how God unfold, unfolded his great salvation of humanity from human, uh, from sin oppression. Restoring our dignity, for we have all turned to be the slaves of sins. Paul even put it in a clearer way. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Verse 1, he says, as we continue from verse 1, For you are dead in transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the Lord of the kingdom of the, of the air, the spirit who is at work, in those who are disobedient. He kind of narrates the state of a sinful man, dead in sin. A person who is enslaved by the cravings of the flesh. the desires of the flesh, the rust of the eyes, the pride of this life, the domination by the enemy, Satan and his works, that we didn't have power all over ourselves. We deserved the wrath of God because we have transgressed the laws of our God. And Paul says, because of the mercy of the way he is rich in mercy, that is why he has given us his only begotten son. When we celebrate Christmas, as we wait upon the Lord, it is a season when we celebrate how God unfolded his great plans for the salvation of humankind. Christ came to save us from sin, to restore the human dignity, and even give us a hope of eternal life, bringing us back to life in fellowship and in relation with God. God has been intervening in human life. He intervenes in our every day-to-day -day life. He sees and when we call upon his name, 
Sometimes when we are sick, he is God who heals and restores. For he is an intervening God. When things are beyond the human capacity, human ability, God still intervenes. But Christmas or around this season, it is a very special season. As we begin the season, we celebrate the way God comes through or the way God came through to our redemption to liberate us from the oppression of sin and the powers of the world, that we can enjoy the fullness of salvation through Jesus Christ. What an awesome character of God. God who sees, God who hears our cry, and God who gets concerned. And God who is not limited. He comes through when we are at our end. And he is able to offer salvation. The question arises before us is how much we have responded to this great plan of the Lord to save and deliver us from the oppression of sin and from the powers that are in at, at work in the world and of those who are in the world. God offered Jesus Christ in his great plan of salvation, he was born on earth as a child. Just like Moses was born as a child in Egypt, Jesus also was born among us, identified with a suffer suffering, just like Moses identified with the suffering of the Hebrews in Egypt. Christ, by being born as a human being, identifies with us as human beings. We do not have a high priest who doesn't understand us, for he lived among us to offer us complete salvation and redemption. And that is what we celebrate in this season than any other thing. God intervenes. God intervenes even when you feel hope, helpless because of COVID-19. He comes even when we do not have a way out. God intervenes. He has done it in the past. He did it to Israelites. He did it for us through Jesus Christ. He is doing it now. Even when you feel helpless because of the pandemic. We should know that our Lord is an intervening God. Your personal issues, God intervenes. Whatever is troubling you, God intervenes. But the greatest intervention is the one that redeems us from the power, from sin, from the wrath of God, and gives us the hope of eternity. I remind you again, God intervenes. God intervenes. He has done it. This is his character. He is doing it today. He is coming in the situation of the whole world. He came through his son. He is coming even at this season of COVID. When we feel helpless, God is doing what he has been doing that is within his character. He is still doing it today. We must keep our hopes high, not based on any other thing, 
But based on the character of God who intervenes, he has done it in the past. He has done it in a great way through his son. He is doing it now. Let us all turn to him. How much have you benefited? Have you responded to this great plan as we celebrate, as we start a season that we refer as Christmas? It is a moment to look at the areas that we have lost our will of freedom, starting from the freedom from sin, bad habits, oppression of the enemy. You look at the, all the areas that the enemy has curtailed our freedom. Let us see this as a freedom month where God is setting us free and God is unfolding his great plan of salvation through his son. Let us take a moment to evaluate how much have we understood this great plan of God, how much have we submitted to God. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for you are an intervening God. Not as you are helpless, discouraged, unable to know the next step to take. And then when you are hopeless, you still come through for us. You came and defeated yourself to the children of Israel in the state of their helplessness. You came to the whole humanity through your son and made us desperate, languishing in sin, in despair, and our dignity had been brought low. But Lord, through your Son, you redeemed us, gave us the hope of eternal life. And we want to thank you, our Lord, for you did not just do it that time. You are doing it today, even in our personal needs. In the state of the whole world due to COVID, like you have done it in the past, do it now, our Father, to continue to redeem us, even in this month, that we celebrate the way you came into the world. May we all embrace your great plan of salvation and the character you have that has been so consistent, God who intervenes. May you intervene in all that is around us. Environment in the whole world, may you intervene. Lord, we thank you and worship you, and it is in just name that we pray and believe. Amen. I appreciate uh, you for joining us for the online summons. You are free to share, give comments, like. We also urge you to subscribe so that you can also be able to get the upcoming summons. May the Lord bless you.